We love you. Hi guys. Um, we got some more information on Patrick Frazy and Kelsey. Well, a little while back, there was reports about social workers. Social workers um, were involved um, and apparently it was supposed to be in, you know, Patrick um, saying that Kelsey was a bad mother and that kind of thing. Well, there's a little bit more to this story and it started way back when. Um, it, it seems like he's a very abusive man. I don't know if he's physically abusive, but he was verbally abusive. Um, angry man. Um, I don't know if he's always been like this. This is his nature. Um, very aggressive man. But um, Cheryl's mother, when she reported Kelsey missing, uh, Kelsey was not answering her phone. Um, they had um, spoke to Cheryl. This is why I was saying that she knew more, more. And when she gave that press um, report of her daughter being missing, she didn't say a lot. And there's a reason why she didn't say a lot. Now it's all coming out a little bit more. Because... Um, as Cheryl said, that uh, Patrick Frazy was her fiance, and they were getting married, and all that and the other. Well, Ke um, Kelsey apparently had her baby a few weeks earlier, and her baby needed a little bit more tender, loving care. You know, needed to. Um, it was just born, I think, three weeks early. So, as we know, you know, babies have to be watched a little bit more as I don't really know what was wrong with the baby. Underweight, breathing problems. Um, I don't know. Uh, see, that K Kelsey is a very small woman. Um, I don't know what the birth weight of Kaylee was. But anyway... She needed a little bit more tender, loving care. When Cheryl first reported her daughter missing, they had a conversation with the, de uh, the detectives, and she was asked to categorize her daughter's uh, relationship with Frazee. And Cheryl described a scene in which Frazee was verbally abusive in the hospital to the hospital staff on the day her daughters gave birth and social services were called to the hospital for a safety evaluation yes guys this is when the social services first came in to the picture and on the scene was when she gave birth to her daughter so and whose fault was it that the hospital had to call social services for the well-being of this little baby? Well, it was the hospital staff that called them in. Um, Cheryl Barrett told um, Kelsey's daughter was born three weeks prematurely and Frazee became enraged that he was not allowed to be in the room during the birth due to special accommodations made by the high-risk delivery. So, okay, well, when there's a high risk and they're doing some kind of an emergency delivery or that kind, they don't want, sometimes you can't be in there. That's all there is to it, right? You cannot be in uh, 
a delivery room for that reason. And he further said he should have killed the nurse who requested social services to check on. Yes, guys, this is what he said. This is coming out of Cheryl's mouth, Kelsey Barrett's mother's mouth. Um, he should have killed the nurse that called the social services. Wow. See, this is why Cheryl knew a little bit more about uh, Patrick's outbursts. And so she, sh she sh um, shares the story about her daughter giving birth three weeks early in the hospital. And, um, and that Patrick was very upset about this because he believed the first few hours of birth. This is what Patrick believes, okay? The first hours of birth needed to be spent with the mother and father for bonding purposes. So even though Cheryl was giving birth three weeks early to her baby, and it was an emergency situation she was giving birth to, and this baby needed a little bit more tender, loving care. You know, it needed probably oxygen. Um, things were happening. And all he was worried about was father needs to be bonded with this baby right after birth. Mm hmm. Yeah, okay then. Um... I don't know where he reads up on all this. Okay, a baby does need to bond, but in emergency situations, some mothers don't even get to hold their baby for hours after birth. Um, hours. So, so he's an expert on this, is he? Yeah, he's an expert on this. And, and he's very irate. You know, he becomes really verbally abusive to the n nursing staff. Now, why did he have to go all that? You know, one should understand that your baby's just been born in an emergency and needed to be taken care of and put in ICU or, you know, those kind of um in a room where the baby needs to be monitored 24 hours or at least the first few hours of the baby's life. There was clearly something wrong with this baby, maybe lack of oxygen or, you know, the breathing. It was a stressful birth, you know, you know, all that that goes along with emergency um, deliveries. And he states he should have killed that nurse. Well, there you go. There's one threatening statement he made over nothing. And we say over nothing. I mean, Kelsey was given birth and it was emergency situation. So for him to go off because he wasn't allowed to hold his baby and he wasn't allowed to be in the room. And you know, Maybe Kelsey didn't want him in the room. Maybe she, maybe she told the doctors not to have him in the room. You know, she could have said that. She could have told the doctors that. And and if she did, this is just my opinion, if she did, then the doctors aren't going to allow the father in the room or anybody in that case. So it's no good getting mad about it. It's just the way it is. Mother comes first. Mother and baby comes first. Mother and baby comes first before your feelings. Oh, and he wasn't allowed to be in the delivery room. So there you go. There's number one. Right off the bat, he was a possessive man. Obsessive man. Right off the bat. So 
I guess it looks like he was trying to take over right there and then. He's trying to take over this baby's life. Um, and he got upset because he couldn't bond with his baby. But you know what? If you can't bond with your baby, you don't go threatening the staff. I'm going to kill you, right? I mean, it's not that serious, is it? I mean, my goodness. Baby comes first, right? Baby comes health and safety come first with your baby. Even if you get to hold them hours later. So, there's the first instant of his outburst that was legally documented and seen by hospital, hospital staff and social workers were in the hospital and they got involved right off the bat because they have to make sure that the baby's well-being is taken care of first. So they now the social services are involved. They have to make sure that this baby is safe to go home in this environment. And that's how the social services got involved with um, this case. And now Patrick Frazee is, he had made comments and to people you know, his friends, his co-workers, whoever they are, and probably KK, you know, you probably told her one big fat blinking story that Kelsey was the one that was abusive to his daughter. But it turns out the evidence proves to be false. The, the evidence is proving that Patrick was the one that was abusive. Yeah, he was the one being abu abusive and verbally abuses abusive. I don't know what he said to the hospital staff, you know, to get them to call the social services in. I mean, it's obviously more than what I just stated, that his threatening, abusive, verbally outburst was obviously scaring the staff and the doctors. So they were called in, and that's the hospital staff to call in. They don't want this happening in a maternity ward and scaring people. And he said he should have killed the nurse that reported him. So this man seems to be threatening a lot of people. He probably, that's not the first time. That's probably not the first time that he's had outbursts like this and threatened people. Because as we know, KK said all she said, you know, everything that she said, and that she was scared of him. Yeah, okay, she could have been scared of him, but her actions during this time was unacceptable. And living so far away, it was unacceptable that she could have let this go on three or four times and not made one single phone call to the police. Um, she could have even called the police on the day she was told to come and clean up a mess or when she knew he was outside and the deed was done. She could have called the police right there and then and got him caught in the act. Yes. Instead of coming to clean up the mess. Mm. But she didn't anyway. She didn't. And let's hope in a little while that when this gets further into the case that they come up with something on her to charge her with um, another offense because she deserves to be uh, charged and serving time with some kind of um, murder charges. And that's my opinion. That's what I think so. I mean, because, you know, guys, when people go to rob a place and something happens and you were just the driver, right? 
and you didn't expect this to happen. This is when you didn't expect this to happen, not when you know this was going to happen. They get charged with the same crime. Somebody gets killed or murdered or hurt. They get charged with robbery too. So that's just an example. I mean, I don't know how she's getting away with this. They're letting her just get zero to three years and plead guilty to a far lesser chance. I know a felony six. She should have been charged with a four or f a five. She should have been maybe charged with a three. That would have been good. But no, they gave her the less charge of felony six. Um, this is ridiculous in my eyes and probably everybody else's eyes too that she is to face more charges and let's hope she will face more charges um, in the future and let's have a discussion and your thoughts on this about you know his abusive ways in the hospital it started right there and then it probably started um, before that you know while she was pregnant he probably got um, he was jealous he was abusive he probably called her all the names under the sun and she too was probably scared of him um, but as this goes on as this goes on she's still in contact with him and then nearer her death she's making these phone calls to him and they seem to be nice phone calls you know nothing too serious um, you're picking the child up and all that and the other so she was still letting him see the child but I think he wanted to see the child all the time. Whenever he says, I'm picking her up, you better be there. Do you know what I mean? I'm picking her up. I'm doing this with her. I'm doing that with her. She was, I expect she was, uh, better be home when he gets there. So she probably couldn't have had much of a life because he was right there behind her all the way. You know, even if they weren't together and they didn't live together. Um, this is why I say when this happens, you have no choice but to go to court and get some kind of um, legal paperwork done. Who's got full custody? Who's got visitation and when? Because you can't have a father or a mother coming to visit their kid any time they please, you know, any time keep calling you up. After a while, after a while, it's, it gets on your nerves. Now, if he was babysitting, you know, taking care of his child while she goes to work, well, that's a different matter, you know. But other than that, so... And there's more to this story, so there's um, other things that have been released in this case. But this is a little update on why the social services were involved in this baby's life. And I don't know how long the social services were involved in this baby. Maybe they've been involved with this baby right up to the day Kelsey went missing. But it seems like it's not Kelsey's fault. It's because of him. But he was still having his child, seeing him, seeing her, taking her out and doing all this and the other. So, you know, maybe the social services weren't involved that much, didn't see him that much. Um, they did their paperwork and, and I guess they spoke to him and that was it and it was over but probably wasn't over because this is documentation this will be on file so Kelsey was um, going to court she was having a child 
a child custody or some kind of hearing. And that's when she was killed before this could ever happen. Because we know, guys, what Kelsey was going to say. She was probably going to say a few things that he didn't like. And then Omar Frazi, the mama, the mama seems to be the same way. They are saying that, you know, he's mama's boy, mama's the boss. When I say jump, you better jump. And, you know, he's probably like his mother. I don't know his mother, but it seems like she's one of those tough cookies. Um, she's got her son under her thumb. And he kind of runs the land or something, takes care of the land, because I can't see that his uh, other brother and sister do much. I don't know what their part is in this running of this ranch or anything like that. But you know what? He's a mama's boy. That's why he's never moved out. That's why he never moved out. Because you can move out of your parents' home and work on your parents' ranch. You don't have to be on the ranch. I mean, his mother's a rancher. I don't know if she's a rancher really, but she obviously worked the land. Well then, hire somebody. Hire somebody else. That's all you have to do. Because you know, your kids grow up and they wanna move out and get married and move out, don't they? Don't mean they have to live with mama all the, all the time. So that's another part of him. And then we'll just have a little discussion on this little part of this update here. And there's some more, you know, the telephone calls. And um, the telephone calls were made from Patrick and Kelsey, um, you know, the day of the alleged murder and um, the day after when Patrick was making phone calls to Kelsey and he was making phone calls to himself on Kelsey's phone. And the towers picked up on these two phones and they followed these two phones and they were pinging off the same pole. You know, they were pinging off the same pole and traveling in the same direction. Yet, Kelsey's supposed to be at home, and he's supposed to be where he is. So, how is that? So, that's document. So, they know that's a big fat lie. You know, the detectives know that he's the one that had the phone. And he's the one making these phone calls. And, you know, being nice about it, like lovey-dovey. You know, so there you go, guys. Let's have a discussion and your thoughts and your opinions on this um, development. And we still got a long way to go in this case. It seems like uh, Patrick was in court the other day. And I guess that was to um, try to stop releases of the warrant affidavit. And a few other things, but most of it got re is being unsealed and released to the public as it's um, public rights to know. It's public, and the judge says he can't seal it because it is for the public eyes to see. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of places that this doesn't happen. But in America, the public has the right to know. So that's just how it is. That's why we get a lot of information on what's going on inside the courtroom. What's going on. So guys, thanks for stopping by.